Hey, welcome to Brantley Brothers Bible Study. We're here to impart revelation knowledge to you. We're here to get faith to you. We're here to see each other grow in the grace of God. Hey, let's get it. Let's get into this word and let's grow together. That's right. Let's open it up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we just love you. We thank you. We are so grateful for this opportunity to just be able to come in and be able to yield our tongues to you, yield our bodies to you, and to come in and to get into your word, Father, and to grow in faith, to grow in grace, and to grow closer to you, Lord. And Father, we just ask you to just be here with us, and uh, Father, just impart revelation and faith into each and every one of us. And we love you, and we give you the glory for everything that's about to take place in your name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory to God. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Ah, where are you headed? Ah, uh, just flipping. <laughs> where are you at? Uh, well, I was actually uh in Proverbs twenty one, but I don't know that I don't know that that's where I was actually headed. Let's see. <clears throat> Blessed be the name. What you looking for? Uh, where it talks about, uh, I was thinking it was Proverbs 15, where it talks about grace. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's 16. Proverbs chapter 16. Man, we have just got I'm telling you. <laughs> so many distractions trying to come on here. My phone it has not quit ringing ever since we, we've done this. We met, started over. No, nah, we're just going to get it. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 16, verse 15. All right. So you're talking about grace? Oh, I don't care. I just, I just this verse All stuck right. out to me this morning. All right, let's get it. All right, playing, can't nobody do anything. I mean... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this up in the Passion Translation here. Hey, Proverbs 16 and 15. Okay. All right. Hey, y'all doing all right? I'm good to see y'all. I'm Trinay. Nice to see you. Good to see y'all here. Y'all have Brother Mark. Yes. Take you back here. We'll get you back there. to this video. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> uh, glory be to God. <clears throat> All right. All right, let's read. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 15. I don't know, this just stuck out to me this morning. You know, <clears throat> we've been talking about this latter day rain, this last end time revival. You know what I mean? We've been talking about it. In the light of the king's countenance is life and his favor or his grace. You know, when you read the Old Testament, anywhere where it says favor, favor and grace are always interchangeable in the Old Testament. And his grace is as a cloud of the latter rain. I mean, I'm going to look at this in the Passion Translation. Life-giving light, life-giving light, Revelation, it streams from the presence of a king. So where do, who do we want to get revelation from? Jesus. We want to king get it from kings. him. So we need to seek his face because that's where, that's where revelation fl flows from. It flows from Jesus. Mm -hmm. flows from our king. And it says, and his favor or his grace. 
And when you think about grace, you think about God's willingness to use his power on your behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, this unmerited favor, we don't deserve it, but whatever you want to call it. It's God's power and manifestation in your life, whether you deserve it or not. And it says, in God's grace, or the grace of that king, will be showered upon those who please him. How do you please God? Through faith. Through faith, exactly what we were talking about yesterday. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you're walking in the Spirit, according to Galatians chapter 3, walking by faith, living your life by faith, it says that all of God's grace, all of the grace of the one that you're walking in, that grace it will, will be poured out upon you as a latter-day rain. So <clears throat> we're walking in the last day's rain by faith. By faith, we're going to walk in this last day, latter day rain. We're going to walk in this last day's revival by faith, and we're going to access that grace by faith. We're, we're going to access it right now. We're not going to wait till we're uh, 75 years old. We're, we're going to do it right now because the set time has come. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. I was just reading that this morning, and I was like, man, that's like, just, I don't know. Just, I, you think of, Every grace gift, what, even the, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, those are considered grace gifts, charisma or charismata, however you want to pronounce it. You know, the, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, gifts of healing, working with miracles, mm -hmm. tongues, interpretation of tongues, all of that is God's grace. Right. It's a grace gift. So therefore, when we're walking in faith, doing this end times revival, what's going to be poured out upon us? Grace. His grace, his grace gifts, tongues, interpretation of tongues, a word of wisdom, healings taking place, miracles. And we can't we can't access that grace if we're not walking in faith. Right. In faith. All of God's grace. Like like we were talking about uh yesterday. In Romans chapter four, Romans chapter five, Ephesians two, eight, that grace, God's grace, is accessed by faith. You just think about it. If if you're going through a situation or circumstance, it ain't nothing that grace can't take you out of. Mm -hmm. Grace will come in and change that situation just like that. It did for the woman with the issue of blood. Changed her life. She had been to doctors. <clears throat> she had done went to all these physicians, and she had an issue of blood for 12 years. Every time she went to a doctor, it wouldn't get better. It would get worse every time. She lived her life 12 years in bondage, in captivity, an outcast, couldn't even fellowship with people because she was considered an unclean person. But she come in by faith and touched the hem of his garments and said, I know I'll be made whole. And she accessed the grace of God and it completely changed her life right there in the blink of an eye. You know, that's that's what grace is, is, is the favor of God. Right. I mean, that's that's what it is. You know, we, we work our whole life so that we can get promotions, so that we can walk uh, in blessings, we, so that we can have things. You know, we work our life away so that we can have favor with man. Mm -hmm. But if we will seek the face of the king, he'll shower his grace, his favor. We can have the favor of the king. We can have the favor of the king. We won't be worried about a promotion. We'll have a promo two promotions a year instead of one prom promotion in our lifetime. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> He's talking about the woman with the issue of blood, and I was thinking about J. Iris. You know, how she pressed in through her faith and received the grace of God. Yes. Received, well, <clears throat> even J. Iris, that's, they were on his what on the way to J. Iris' house to heal his daughter. Yep. Which would have been a grace gift oh, by the yeah. grace of God. But what happened on his way? She, she died. Can't. There you go. That the little girl passed over. away. Mm -hmm. So Jesus told him when it, when the, when the uh, when the people came to him and started telling him that your daughter's dead, trouble the master no more. Yep. Jesus looked at him and spoke these words right here. He said, "Be not afraid. Only, Only believe." believe. So, what's, what happens when, uh, well, I mean, you're looking at fear right here. Yep. You know, 
fear immediately wanted to, Jesus knew that fear was going to try to sit in because his daughter had passed away. Mm -hmm. Well, fear is one of those death connectors that will connect you to whatever you're afraid of. Right. You know? Well, and he told him how to override that. Mm -hmm. Only believe. Only believe. <laughs> All think. you need to do is have faith. That's it. Have the faith of God. And, and two, well, this may be a little bit off topic, but when they got back to the house, I mean, what did Jesus have to do there? There was a lot of stumbling blocks there to prevent oh, Jay yeah. Iris from believing. There was a bunch of people in the room. Murmuring and complaining, just like we was talking about yesterday mm. with, uh, with the children of Israel. Yep. So what did Jesus do? Put them out. He said, get out. He told all the unbelievers in the house. He was going to raise this dead girl up. Mm -hmm. He told everybody in the house. Get out of this house. You're, they was mocking him, I think Matthew says. Mm -hmm. They were making fun of Jesus for trying to come in, even laughing at, him. laughing at him, for trying to come raise a dead girl. Mm. He said, you get out of this house. All right, so by faith, we can access God's grace, oh, the yeah. favor of God, if we seek the <clears throat> king mm -hmm. during this last day's revival. During the latter rain that you was received, it was just talking about. Yep. We, when you look at Jesus' walk, you see the grace of God in manifestation mm -hmm. all through there, oh, all yeah. through the Gospels. So what can we expect to see in the latter rain? The grace of God in full manifestation, just like it was then. Oh, my goodness. These works you shall do and greater works. And greater works and greater grace gifts and more grace, grace upon grace. <clears throat> John 1, 17, he says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace came to you by Jesus Christ. The law was given by Moses, but grace was given by Jesus Christ. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Ooh, Lord. So we're under the, ever since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, grace, which, I mean, you've seen the grace of God in manifestation yep. while Jesus was on earth. But we entered into the de-dispensation of grace after the death, burial, and resurrection. Yep. But that dispensation, it started before. I mean, it it overlapped a lot. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that last Wednesday night. Yeah. So if if all right, so if you had the law, you have the grace. Man, right, you had the the uh, dispensation of the law. Yeah. The dispensation of grace and the dispensation of the millennial reign. Yeah. And all dispensations overlap one another. Oh yeah. Yeah, because we've seen Jesus was bringing us into something. Therefore, to bring us into something, he had to take us out of something else, you know, and it overlaps. You just think about when you, when you go to to the, the biggest city near you. Yeah. What do you start coming into before you get to that city, to the actual city? That there's the outskirts. The outskirts, the overlap. Mm -hmm. When the cities have grown out. That's that's why Dallas and Fort Worth ain't just Dallas, Fort Worth. It's called the DFW. It's right. a metro, a metropolitan area. Because mm -hmm. it over, it comes out into these small towns and grows. You know? That happens when you come into to Terrell, Texas, to Tyler, Texas, you know, down through there, Prosper, yep. McKinney. All of that is part of the DFW because it overlaps. If, if you've been to those, you've been to DFW. You've oh, been yeah. to Dallas, Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, the reason we're saying this is this will show you what to expect mm -hmm. in this latter rain. Oh, yeah. It's going to be, all right, so <clears throat> he said in Revelation chapter 21, there shall be no more curse. No more curse. How is there going to be no more curse? It's got to overlap. Got to. It's got to. And what is that overlapping waiting on? Us to walk into it. The sons of God to, to be, be revealed. revealed. The sons and daughters of God to be revealed. Mm. It's that revelation, That's knowledge. It. Lord, help For 2,000 years, it? it seems like everybody's been waiting on God. And God's sitting here waiting on us. He's sitting here waiting on us. 
I give you, I give you my spirit. You know, He's here to teach you all things. I give you my name. I gave you my righteousness. I gave you my authority. I gave you the, the a seat with me. <laughs> you have the keys to the kingdom. So why wait, man? If you get, if someone comes up and hands you the keys to a house. Let's wait 30 years before you go into this house. I'm going to go ahead and give you the keys, but don't go into this house until you're 58 years old. Yeah. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> he mm -hmm. gave us the keys to the kingdom so that we can have days of heaven, the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's right. Whatever you bind shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose shall be loosed in heaven. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus. My goodness. Ooh, thank you, Father. No, he didn't, Paul. <laughs> he gave it to the one. Jesus didn't give the keys of the kingdom to Peter. He gave it. He gave it to everyone that that was that had the revelation that Jesus was the Son of God. And Peter had that revelation. Yeah, Peter is not the rock. The revelation that Peter got was the rock. Because, mm -hmm. because he said. He said, you would not have known this unless it had been revealed. Revealed. To you. Revelation. Upon this rock. Mm. Upon what rock? The revelation. The revelation. Not upon Peter. Peter can't save us. Peter can't do nothing mm -hmm. for us. Peter's in heaven. <laughs> Peter's rooting us on. He's wanting us to get that same revelation that he got. That he give his life for. Yep. <clears throat> Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> I was looking for some of these uh, where he closes closes his uh, where Paul closes his letters out. You know when he says a lot of things, he says grace. He'll say grace and peace and mercy. He'll say all these things after grace. He always puts grace first. Yeah. He always the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Because if you're walking in the grace of God, you're gonna have peace. You're gonna have mercy. You're gonna have Forgiveness of sins, you're gonna have uh, power, authority. You're gonna have all this other stuff that's working on your behalf because you're walking in the grace, mm -hmm. the, the unmerited favor of God. Things that you couldn't do to deserve things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He closes and opens, even opens some of them up. Yeah, that way. I just, man, that's good. Grace. What's up, Stephanie? Mm. Y'all preaching over here? Yeah, I think some of them even talks about how he's an apostle by the grace of God or yeah. something like that. Yep. Or, oh, yeah, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I think it is verse 10. You know, Paul was telling telling the church, he said, I labor harder than all these other apostles. Mm -hmm. He said, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me labored for me. The grace labored. When you walk in the grace, you're not laboring. You know what I mean? The grace works for you. But when you're ministering, well, just flip it around. So if you're in the ministry and you're getting weary, wore out, laboring. You're trying to do it on your own. That's it. You're trying to do it without the grace of God. Mm. We could have needed to know a lot of this last year. Yeah. <clears throat> Over the past five years. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 22. He says, the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Grace be with you. <laughs> if the Lord Jesus Christ is with you, grace is with you. If he's with you, grace is with you. That's exactly what Proverbs 15 is saying. If, if the king's with us, everything that the king has to offer is there too. You think about it. When, when me, my wife, my kids, when we go out to eat, my kids receive my ability for me to pay for their supper that night. They receive my ability to give them wisdom, to give them understanding, to protect them. They receive everything that I'm able to do on their behalf because they are with me. Mm -hmm. That's the same way. When we, when we get Jesus, when we get the Holy Ghost, when we get him, we get everything that he can do. Right. And we can't access that grace, that grace Unless it is by faith. By faith. Man. Glory be to God. Faith. 
Peter said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So if you're going to grow in grace, you're going to have to grow in knowledge. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what Second Peter, Second Peter he chapter, starts it off. That's how he starts yeah. this off. He says in verse 2, grace and peace will be multiplied to you through knowledge of God. And of our Lord Jesus. So when you get revelation of Jesus, when the, he has been revealed to you, you will grow in grace. The more of him that gets revealed to you, the more of that grace that you're going to have access to. Mm -hmm. Grace and peace. And it, he don't say that he'll add grace to you or he'll add peace to you. He says that he will multiply. Ooh, Lord mercy. Through the knowledge man, of God and of Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> All right. Grace and peace will be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ according. He's talking about this right here. Because, you have, because grace and peace has been multiplied to you through knowledge, he says now, according to his divine power, he's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called you to glory and, to, and power. And he said that he has given you great and exceeding precious promises. And it says by that by these promises, you will now be a partaker of the divine nature of God. And it says that you will be able to escape all the corruption that is in this world through the lust. Mm. The I, you believe the devil wants you to get revelation? Partakers of the divine nature. Growth by germination. Remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo. No, I wrote that in there. Man. Mm. I mean, that's multiplying. Yep. <laughs> yep. His grace, his peace, his, mm. his divine nature. What makes, up, what makes up his divine nature? <laughs> Well, I was preparing a message for this last weekend. I got over into Second Peter chapter one, what Caleb was just reading, and uh, I just got my my blue letter Bible app out and started doing my inter interlinear concordance, and was looking up the Greek definitions of these words. And one of the definitions of nature, because it says in verse four that by these great and precious promises. By the knowledge of these great and precious promises, we can be a partaker of his divine nature. Well, that, that word nature in the Greek, one of the definitions was growth by germination. And germination is when, you can probably explain it better than me, but when you go and plant seed, if you go plant ryegrass in a field or whatever, that those seeds have a certain percent German, germination. Yeah, germination rate. So <clears throat> 85%, 60%, 100%. Right. So you're not just going to have that one grain of seed that grows. It's going to germinate and produce more seed or more grass or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh... Mm. Glory to God. <clears throat> you know, just thinking about back to faith, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. He tells us to, to add things here to our faith. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Add to your faith. Add to your power. You know, and this is one way that we can check to see if our faith is, if our faith ain't working, we'll know why our faith ain't working. Well, according to Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, I believe, faith worketh by love. We need to check our love walk and forgiveness and stuff like that. But when it says charity right there he's talking about love yep. the next verse in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5 it says and besides this give all diligence and add to your faith virtue what does New King James say I got King James out oh, <clears throat> he says add to your faith virtue or power Power. Well, and what happened with the woman the issue of blood what did Jesus feel virtue virtue come out of me power come out power. of me he says add power to your faith and he says, add knowledge to your power. He says, add temperance to your knowledge and add patience to your temperance and add patient godliness. Oh, and uh, add godliness to your patience. And godliness is being uh, nourished up in the word of faith. Yeah. And add to your godliness brotherly kindness and add to your brotherly kindness 
love. For if all of these things be in you, we're talking about faith, virtue, and revelation knowledge, temperance, uh, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. If all of these things shall be in you, it says, for if these things be in you and they abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor will you be unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacks these things, they are blind and they cannot see very far off. And I believe he's talking about Christians there too. Yeah. Because, I mean, they've got the faith. If they don't add these things to the faith, well, they can't be a partaker of his great, exceeding, precious promises. Yep. And it says that they're blind. They can't see very far. They can't get beyond the cross, in other words. You know, that they, they all they do is get right here, and they're going to only walk as far as they see. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. <clears throat> That's why we got to come over into the resurrection. Side. Yes. What his resurrection brought. Power. But he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the, I, I would rather you, brethren, that you would give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Mm. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everlasting kingdom. Glory be to God. You want to give everybody opportunity? That's what I was thinking. This is going to be six. I'm going to shut it down. Like I said, I'm, we're going to, you going to end your life? Yeah. We're going to go back live in one hour. I'm going to, I'll be preaching tonight, so we're going to live stream it. Oh, I'm going to try to get down close. Just for the better, just for you two purposes, yeah. just so I have a better quality. So, uh, if anybody wants to give our life to Christ on here, first I want to thank y'all for coming and joining us in this live. And like I said, we're going to try to post this live. These lives will be posted to our YouTube. You can go subscribe to our YouTube through our bios. Yeah, y'all uh, go subscribe to these YouTube yes. channels, both of them. Uh, eventually, we want, want to get to where we can go live on YouTube also. Uh, but... We're going live on TikTok right now. We're going to take advantage of TikTok as much as we can. So if anybody on here wants to give your life to Christ, I want to lead you in a confession of salvation. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. Jesus came for the world because God so loved the world. So there's not a person in this world that God does not love and wants, wants them to come to repentance. It says that's the will of God that everybody comes to repentance. So uh, it says, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that we shall be saved, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's all it is, confession of faith, confessing Jesus as the Son of God, confessing his death, burial, and resurrection, confessing that you believe in him. So if you want to do that, I want to lead you in that. So just repeat this after me. Say, Father God, I admit to you that I have sinned. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. And he died on that cross. And God raised Jesus from the dead. Now I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, put in the comments, I said it, where we can rejoice with you. Yes. Put, I said it, and we will rejoice with you. That's the greatest decision you could ever make. Diane, let us know. Mike, what's up? KK, glory be to God. Soul shepherd, glory be to God. Those uh, autocorrects get me too. What's up, Mike? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Spoon fed. Thank you, Lord Jesus.